If you love Jesus, say yes. God is good. It is honor for me to be here with you guys. I, I really, really cherish the relationships that we have. Um, I honor the pastors, Pastor Vlad, Pastor Vasile, what you guys do. It's amazing. Amazing. And I, I know that Vlad has a calling. And I want to encourage you guys as a church to pray for him constantly. Keep him in your prayer. All, all of your team, keep in prayer. Because what you guys will see in the future, that would be amazing. And the calling that he has on his life for this nation and for all over the world, it will come to pass with your help. When you support him, when you pray for him. Um, for his protection, for wisdom, you guys will see how God will unlock the gift on his life. And um, I'm always looking up to uh, Pastor Vlad. I, I, I really cherish the relationship that we have. And I also want to really, uh, Pastor Vasily, when I will become 60, I really want to look like him. <laughs> He's always in shape, fit. I'm like, man, this is this how it's supposed to be <laughs> you know um, I didn't make it this uh, past conference that you guys had in federal way because I had to be in California um, but last conference I was there and while I was there and uh, Pastor Ilya was speaking on the message of widow filling the vessels with oil and I felt like the Holy Spirit speaking to me outside the message and the, the what he told me is this because I've been in ministry for over 20 years and um, and I had my business family and ministry doing full-time and this is what God told me He's like why don't you give up your business and do ministry as much as you can you know my question was like okay well I know how much I make doing business and I know how much church will afford paying me because I'm on the board with as far as finances. I approve all the salaries. <laughs> I'm like, I know how it's going to be. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and then I start paying. I'm uh, praying. I'm like, God, find someone. <laughs> and God, I, I did found it. <laughs> Just have to obey and do exactly what I told you. And you know those prayers when you're praying and, and you're asking God, but He already told you and you know exactly what you need to do, but you're still praying like you didn't hear it? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Be honest. We all do that. So uh, last, uh, the beginning of this month, November, that's, that's the moment when I stepped into the office, kind of give my business. Um, and I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward, uh, you know, for what? For God's grace, because I've never been in the office. I'm always on the field. I'm always dealing with people, dealing at, um, since high school. Never been in the office since, uh, I mean, that was my job, on the field. And sitting in the office thinking, how do they do this? How do they do this? Like, sitting and doing. And driving back that day, I'm, I'm kind of like praying God I need your grace and I'm, I'm like and I need to sign up maybe for the gym <laughs> that was probably the time <laughs> um, before I share what's on my heart I want to say once again thank you I was supposed to come with my wife but she couldn't make it because our little the youngest one got sick I have five kids by the way um, my youngest one he's four uh, his Micah, Nathan, and last time we left him with the babysitter, and the babysitter's like, so what's your middle name? He's like, Nathan, and she's like, like Nathan Morris? He's like, yeah, you can call me that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, if you were prayed for the healing this afternoon, I, I want to encourage you, you know, I had a problem with my hands for many years, many years. And I had 
big famous preachers would come pray curse the thing i mean do anything anointed nothing happened just nothing happened and then during communion service i'm ta i'm taking communion and holy spirit speaks to me why is it when you do something wrong and you come to me and you ask for forgiveness it's easy for you to to receive forgiveness we come we ask god I did this and this forgive me Holy Spirit help me to never do this again give me strength and we walk away thanking God and the Holy Spirit why is it so hard for you to just simply accept the healing and that that moment I said God I accept the healing and I thank you for the healing I didn't feel goosebumps I didn't feel a tear running down my cheek I like nothing happened I just agreed to believe the fact that already happened on the Calvary and one one month passed by I got healed just I didn't even notice the the day of the healing it was just I walked into the healings I just want to encourage you if you got prayed just accept the fact that he already healed you on Calvary you already healed because that's what the Bible says and when you align yourself with the scripture you become one with him you align yourself you just accept it and be thankful for it you don't have to feel it to walk in it you don't have to feel that you are forgiven you just have to accept the forgiveness and walk in it you just have to accept the breakthrough and walk in it and everything we accept from him it's by faith it's not what you feel it's your faith and every time when Jesus prayed he asked many times this question do you believe do you have faith sometimes he would see he would look into their eyes and he saw faith in them and he's like he's ready for a miracle amen amen, amen. amen. well if you have your Bible please go with me to second Kings chapter 2 You know, I'm, I'm here not to speak something new that you never heard before. I'm here just to remind all of us, including myself, the things that we already know. I think um, you guys have amazing preachers here. The, they know how to unlock something that you never seen before. That's their job to do. My job is just to remind all of us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> amen well second kings chapter 2 verse 9 that's the story when uh, prophet elijah was about to leave and her ser his servant elisha was following him serving him and this is the story when they had crossed elijah said to elijah tell me what can i do for you before i am taken from you let me inherit a double portion of your spirit Elisha replied you have asked a difficult thing Elijah said yet if you see me when I am taken from you it will be yours otherwise it will not Holy Spirit we're so thankful that you are in this place that you are the one who gives revelation you are the one who brings bread to us and right now we we're accepting and we refuse to leave this place the same in Jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. when they had crossed you know sometimes you have to come to a point in your life before you hear the question that you should hear you have to cross something in your life when you're still battling between your will and his will you'll never hear the right question from him the moment you cross the moment you you put this line in the sand and you say this is I'm not going back I'm staying here whatever happens he begins to speak he begins to speak and we see the servant Elisha is asking for a double portion he's asking for a double portion now the good thing about this that 
the the servant Elisha he realized the time he's facing it's different than the time Elijah was walking in he realized that the anointing that Elijah had he needs double portion he realized that for him to influence his generation he realized that for him to to do something great he can't go on on someone else's revelations and someone else's anointing he needs more than just that you know the bible says that we overcome him by our faith not your parents not your pastors not your past revelation by your faith active faith that you have now we overcome him see he was asking for a double portion he's not being ignorant in this moment he realizing that he needs a double portion because he really sees the challenge that he will face he sees the problems that he will see, face he knows exactly what he's asking for and he's asking for a double portion for one reason because he wants to influence the regeneration he wants to bring change See, I, I'm, I'm really thankful for our pastors. I'm really thankful for my parents that raised me in faith, that, that impacted my life the way they impacted. I'm really thankful. But I know one thing that what they experienced and the anointing that they walked in, I need more. I need bigger revelations. I need something bigger than just yesterday's revelations. I need bigger. Why? Because to influence this world we need to walk in his fullness to influence you can't influence by adapting yourself to the culture you have to be above the culture to influence the culture and I believe we and you guys as a church we are called not just to survive but we are called to influence we're called to bring change to our city to our country to our state we are called that's the calling on our life and we have to come to a point in our life where we ask ourselves a question what we have now is it enough or we do need to seek more the challenge that the servant had is not oh i i, I can't i can't miss i can't no he says that you're asking a hard thing the hard thing was not to see it the hard thing is to carry the double portion because when bigger anointing come when more gifts come when more weight come the more responsibility comes those who are given much will be asked much there's a responsibility that comes into our life when we begin to carry his anointing the things that I used to have done it was okay but when I stepped into the new calling when I stepped into the new anointing those things are not good for me anymore they might not be a sin but I have to get away from them I remember when I really felt the calling on my life as a, as a as a youth pastor I remember this moment when we all got all of my friends and including me we got married in one year we had 18 weddings in one year and they were all there's hope for somebody and they were all in church I think there's only a few of us I got married to a, a Veronica she was from our daughter church but um otherwise and we're all like we rented apartments in one place our services were at two o'clock so we would hang out for breakfasts in the morning like the it was like a click of a young couples we would go to vacations together stuff like that and then I began to feel this calling and I told him no I can't I can't do this anymore I need to invite teenagers to my house I need to spend time with the teenagers I need and they're like why are you wasting your time with those kids I mean just leave them alone and let's do this but the time went on you know recently I had a conversation with one of my very very close friends I literally were with him since high school grew up in the same church just and he chose to stick to the business 
and I chose to stick to the ministry and running a business and this is what he tells me he's like hey I realize that the influence you have the circle of friends that you have and what you accomplished in life it's way more than I tried everything in my life he's like I'm, I'm so limited with my friends I'm so limited with this and in life even in business I have something but when I look at your life it's like you, everything's going smooth he thinks that way <laughs> <laughs> but when we begin to carry and walk into close and more and more of his fullness there's bigger responsibilities now the challenge that prophet tells him if you will see how I will be taken away from you then you will have it you know that the battle is for your attention it's literally for your attention because if the enemy got your attention if he gets your attention he will get your vision he will change your vision the moment we give him attention the moment we begin to spend time with giving him attention he begins to change our vision when he begins to change our vision our desire begin to change when our desire begin to change our worship begins to change and when our worship begins to change we begin to possess things that we didn't want to possess but we we have them and if we look into what the world does for example if they want to change the culture all they need to do they need to influence a people that are in Hollywood they'll make they will produce the music and young people will begin to listen or watch and they will begin to worship and then they begin to possess you know this those famous movies that are out there about suicide and stuff like that and then we see those kids struggling with suicide thoughts depression why because it's the pattern that the enemy did it's changing the vision changing your focus and then a person begins to possess something that he didn't even want it to have but willingly and if we go to Genesis chapter 3 um, I think it's a it's a great verse that explains this Genesis 3 6 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for getting wisdom she took some and ate it see when when he changed it the focus everything begins to change everything so we're not just trying to look for something no the thing that we must see always in front of us like David said um, Psalm 16 David says in verse 8 I keep my eyes always on the Lord with him on my right hand I will not be shaken when I keep the Lord always in front of my eyes everything that comes into my life I will not be shaken because that's the promise the only thing that he asks is to keep your eyes on him just keep your focus on him and everything that come into your life you will overcome it David saw God in front of him when he faced Goliath he saw the Lord when he faced lion or a bear he sought the Lord and it was not his strength but he knew that who's coming for him because the Bible says Apostle Paul says in Romans he who is for us who can be against us if the God if God is for us who can be against us if I had a kid in high school I remember him because he was so everybody wants to just beat the kid you know 
but everybody was afraid of doing it because he had an older brother the big dude that everybody was afraid of and everybody wanted to do something but nobody couldn't same thing in, in our life sometimes the enemy will go against you he will try to place fear in your life but he can't do anything because God is for you who can be against you nobody can be against you because God is for you and David says I saw the Lord always in front of my eyes and that's why I have victories that's why I had I accomplished what I accomplished because I saw the Lord always in front of my eyes that's why enemy always wants to change what you see because the moment he changes what you see he got your attention and everything begins to change Apostle Paul says this 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all with unveiled face beholding as in mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord you know I had a, when I was a kid I grew up in a big family so my dad he worked with very famous painters is that how it's painters or yeah um, and one of the one of the guys said hey I want to make a huge portrait of your guys family and the, he invited he came to our house and he would sit each one of us all 14 of us took several weeks of doing it for two hours you're sitting in front of this dude and he's just looking at you and putting it doing whatever he's supposed to be doing and here's the thing when it comes to his presence it's not one time event that changes you it's when we face him every day when we see him every day we begin to look more and more like him it's not one time event yes it's important to respond to the altar call but altar call just the beginning it's the first step but then the walk begins and then the transformation begins and then people that knew you before they begin to look at you and say hey what's wrong with you you don't you used to do this and this but now you don't and you didn't even realize when it happened but it happened because you are looking face to face to one who is capable to transform you apostle paul says imitate christ imitate christ how can i imitate christ if i if i rarely rarely see him for me to imitate him I have to daily see how he responds how he acts and then I never had a compassion I start having a compassion I never loved certain people but I began to love them why because I began to see how he loves how he has a compassion I began to look more and more like him I'm not forcing myself to become like him I'm just simply becoming like him and I began to reflect his glory all around me and people begin to notice this it all starts with me stepping into his presence why well, we have the access full access just daily coming into his presence Hebrews 11 verse 26 he thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt for he was looking ahead to his great reward see he thought it was better you can only change the way you think when you really see him see we sometimes we try to change the way we think first but the way we change our thinking it's in his presence it's in his presence we begin to see ourselves like we never saw ourselves before it's in his presence I begin to notice actually my thinking is wrong my confession is wrong I need to change and, and in his presence he begins to transform me it's in his presence so he says he thought it will be better you will be able to think differently not like this world why because you were in his presence you see something that they don't see it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt not fearing the king's anger he kept right on going because he 
kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. The challenges that we will face in this earth, they will be real. But the difference between us and the world, those who have the right focus, the right uh, vision, it's this because we know who we see. And that's the make, that makes the difference. Because the Bible says in the last days people will tremble, tremble even to see what's coming to this earth. But just because you know who you believe, just because you know who you see always, you'll have peace yeah. in your heart. You'll overcome everything that comes your way. Why? Because you always see Him. David, when he says, I see the Lord every day, every day, even in the midst of my enemies, he says, the Lord prepares the table. The Lord prepares the table in front of my enemies and he knows everything that he prepared the Lord did this we all feasted this couple of days we ate uh good we I mean good that you guys doing fasting now <laughs> but here's the thing our our table is limited but if we look into the scripture we see that there's more than 600 promises and when the Lord prepares the table, He says, you know what? I'm going to put all of my dishes in front of you. And for one reason, I want you to enjoy everything that I prepared. I want you to step in. And if, if you need the healing, there's a promise on the table. All you need to do, you need to take it. If you need a breakthrough, there's a promise for this. If your kids not going to church, they're stepped away from God, there's a promise for this also. And there's every promise that we have there, yes and amen, in Christ Jesus. And if we see Him, the promises of God becomes real in our life. We begin to possess them. Ephesians Apostle Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people apostle paul says i pray that your eyes will be enlightened see sometimes we just simply need to ask the holy spirit holy spirit enlighten my eyes my spiritual eyes in light so i could see clearly so i could always have the center what you accomplished for me so i could always see this because if if i see this the right way my life will be aligned the right way apostle paul leaving this earth he gives this instruction to apostle timothy and he says timothy do this this and this and this and this and then there's a verse that he says remember Jesus Christ the son of David who was crucified who was buried and rose again see Timothy remember in the midst of what you will be doing the great stuff that you will be doing for the kingdom I want you to remember one thing I want you to have your focus I want you to always see this one thing is what he accomplished for you because if I remember this if I align myself with this what he wants me to align I begin to align my life my sacrifice begin to be real my 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 perspective begins to be real why because the cross makes the difference if I have the revelation of the cross it will determine how much I will sacrifice of my life the bigger revelation about the cross the the more I lay down myself on the altar now the question that we 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 can come about how how can I with this whole business with this life that is just going how can I keep myself focused on the main thing how do I do that do I come just once a week to the service listen to the message enjoy the wonderful worship what, how can I keep myself aligned what he wants me to be aligned with? Apostle John, 
Jesus actually says, abide in me. Let my word abide in you. And again, you might think, well, it's something complicated. No, it's not complicated at all. It's just reading the word, praying, and fasting. Reading the word, praying, and fasting. Fasting, praying, reading the word. And doing this. And what I got happens. I began to abide in him. It's simply, I read a scripture. And I go to work. But I'm still thinking about the scripture. I'm still abiding in this scripture. I'm like, Holy Spirit, thank you. What you spoke to me this morning, it was so powerful. And you begin to meditate in him. And you are binding in the word. Because he is the word. Sometimes we look for those cute worship sessions where we can soak in his presence. It's wonderful. But the, the purpose of his presence is to lead you from A to B. So you could be changed. The purpose of, the, of his presence is to show you what you've never seen before. The purpose of the presence is to lead you somewhere. So if I call the presence of, if I said I was in the presence of God, but I stay the same, something was wrong. Either I was disobedient or that wasn't the presence. Because if I was in the presence, I had to make a choice. In the presence, he will always put me in front of the choice. So if I claim I was in his presence, but nothing happened in my life. It's either I was disobedient or that wasn't the presence. You know, the law of gravity, when we throw things, they fall. And the law of sin, it's very similar. You don't want to sin, but it happens. You force yourself not to sin. You force yourself to do this distance, but it doesn't happen. It's, it's the law of sin. It's very similar to the law of gravity. You didn't do anything to create the law of gravity. It's just there. So as with disobedience of one man, everybody became sinners. It's just, this is who people are. They're sinners. <laughs> sinners. <laughs> so... We are born in sin. You can, you can, you, you know, you can polish the pig. You can even put the bow tie on the, on the pig, perfume it. But the nature of a pig is this. The moment he sees the dirt, it will be there. That's, that's our nature. We can't. So the humanity come up with a new law, the, the law of aerodynamics. And the benefit of this law is this. I have to be in the plane. I have to stay in the plane to enjoy this new law. For me to enjoy the new law, I have to remain in Christ. And for plane to take off, I have to put the fuel in the plane, which is my prayer. And the plane does not take off and make circles. No, the plane has a purpose. The plane has a goal. And if I put the fuel in the plane and I put the word of God as my vision, I begin to go somewhere and I'm overcoming the law of gravity. Why? Because I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Him. And something begins to happen. The things that used to hold me down, now they have no control over me. Why? Because Jesus says, know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm enjoying the truth. I am flying in Him. I am in Him and He is in me. And everything that had control over me yesterday has no power today. Why? Because I am in Christ Jesus. That's the purpose of us always staying focused on Christ Jesus. And he does this when we remain in him. He breaks the word. You know, Portland known for good coffee places and good restaurants. And we have this awesome place. I uh, forgot the name of it, but it's, it's owned by Australians. 
Lana, you've been there? No. Uh, anyways, it's such a, I mean, they, they make the best coffee there. They have this whole bar section with four, 14 different baristas who's doing different coffees. Um, and here's the, the unique thing about this place is this. When I came first time, I didn't kind of, but this is what happens. So you, the, the waitress come and he asks you a question. Do you understand everything? Do you have any questions? And then, I'm, well, I have a question about this. He goes like this. He sits down next to you. He goes, so this was prepared by this chef. It's this, this, this. And he begins to explain it to you. And he makes it personal. You know, sometimes we can debate on the scripture. We can debate on the menu. What is good, what is bad, what's right, what's wrong. But here's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes right next to you. And he says this, you know what? I don't want you to debate. Or I don't want you to read the word just to overcome your debates with someone. I don't want you to read the word to prove your point. No, I'm here next to you to actually go and bring you what the chef prepared. I'm here for you to bring you the promise of God so you can enjoy it. He literally enlightens the word of God in us. And the word of God becomes alive in us. And that's the word that we overcome this world. The word that stuck to us. That's the word that brings faith. That's the word. Not the word that we just read day and night, day and night. It's awesome to read. But the word that brings changes, it's the word that the Holy Spirit got to you. I want to pray right now. And the purpose of our, of our prayer were, is this. Holy Spirit, help us. Always, always. Remember the main thing. Always have our eyes focused on you. In Hebrews 12, it says, let us focus our eyes. Our eyes should be always focused only on Him. Because when our eyes are focused on Him, you don't have to struggle with your identity. You don't have to prove your point to someone. You don't have to impress anyone. All you need to do, just have your eyes focused on Him. Last story and we're going to pray. One of, the, our, one of our youth camps, I'm sitting while one of the guest speakers is preaching, preaching and I'm, I'm listening to the message and the message was about relationship with God and has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit spoke to me. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me, you are free. And I'm like, I didn't feel that I am bound but you are free and then he begins to clarify himself he says you don't have to be someone that is successful you just have to be yourself because in the early days I was always facing this challenge if I would see some successful youth ministry I would try to do and use the same methods and do this and this and this and I would literally in the midst of this cycle of ministry would lose my identity and try to perform like someone else is performing and I felt the Holy Spirit is saying hey you just have to be yourself just see me and be yourself you know the beauty is when you are yourself people are attracted to you when you are yourself you know I have a huge gap with the young people I'm over 40 I have a big gap when the teenagers come and they, and I have teenagers and young people every week in my house you know that you don't have to be like them to love them you just have to love them and they will be attracted to this love and to love them 
in the real way it's impossible to make yourself love them you have to have the right focus in your life you always have to come to his presence and say, God I'm here and I'm refusing to leave this place the same enlighten my heart shine your light in me show those areas and he will he will he's always speaking can we all stand? <laughs> you know which prayer God enjoys? It's not the right prayer. Although we have to have pray a right prayer. The prayer that he enjoys it's when the words that come out of your mouth they match your heart you don't have to perform in front of his and him you don't have to the words that will come out of your mouth if they match the heart that's the prayer that he enjoys sometimes it's it's it could be wrong theologically but if it's your heart he will listen and he will work on behalf of that prayer so this afternoon I want us to pray and ask the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit I'm willing to do my part I'm willing to pray I'm willing to fast I'm willing to do this and this but I need your grace to help me stay focused and always see what you accomplish on Calvary for me that's what he wants it's for you to stay focused on him and the success is guaranteed come on lift your hands right now from the front to the back in his presence we're gonna begin to worship